I used to be the best rice farmer in Maine, and I just moved here to Arizona. I'm currently struggling because my rice isn't flourishing, and I'm really wondering which crop to plant. Let's go back to the basics. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants, algae, and some types of bacteria transform light energy into chemical energy. During photosynthesis, plants absorb carbon dioxide and water from the soil and atmosphere. In the plant cell, carbon dioxide is reduced, acquiring electrons, and water is oxidized, losing electrons. In doing so, the carbon dioxide turns into glucose and the water into oxygen. Following this, the plant stores energy inside the glucose molecules and releases the oxygen back into the atmosphere, which is how we have access to the oxygen we breathe. Some factors that impact photosynthesis include light availability, water, carbon dioxide, temperature, availability of nutrients, and chlorophyll content. To grow the best crops, you need to understand photorespiration. Photorespiration inhibits the Galvin cycle when oxygen levels are high, causing a decrease in sugar production. Photosynthesis is the most efficient pathway for plants to build sugars and release oxygen. Thus, when the byproduct of oxygen is replaced with CO2 in this alternate pathway, it reduces photosynthetic efficiency. A crucial factor determining if this process will occur is due to temperature and how the concentrations of O2 and CO2 are affected. This unique process occurs in conditions in which CO2 concentration decreases, leaving rubisco to not have enough CO2 to fix, causing it to fix O2 instead. When a plant when stomata is open, CO2 diffuses in and O2 and water diffuse out. When the stomata closes at higher temperatures and drier conditions in order to reduce water loss by evaporation, the O2 concentration from photosynthesis builds up, thus increasing photorespiration. However, some plants in certain environments have developed specialized features to avoid this inefficient issue. These plants are C3, C4, and CAM. Most plant species on Earth use C3 photosynthesis, including popular farming crops such as rice, wheat, soybeans, which thrive back in Maine where you came from. Well, how do these plants work better in Maine than Arizona? Well, Mr. Farmer, you need to learn about how your plants back in Maine adapted to their environment to grow. C3 plants thrive best in cool, wet climates and die in hot, dry climates, as you have learned from moving here to Arizona. C3 survive in Maine better since they open their stomata during the day to absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis while the sun is out. At night, when the sun is down and can't perform photosynthesis anymore, they close their stomata to avoid losing excess water. This allows the plants to have an ample supply of CO2 and water, causing photorespiration to not be an issue. Well, can you explain it a little better? I don't quite understand. Well, rubisco is an enzyme present in the plant chloroplast, the little green things within the leaves, that is involved in fixing atmospheric carbon dioxide during photosynthesis and in oxygenation of the resulting compound during photorespiration. However, when photorespiration occurs, rubisco picks up oxygen as a substrate instead of carbon dioxide. Thus, when rubisco initiates this pathway, it's making a big mistake, causing the plant to waste energy and decrease sugar synthesis. Oh, so that's why my crops that I was growing in Maine aren't working in Arizona. Exactly. Now that you're here in Arizona, you need to grow the right plants. Well, can you tell me about them so I can get to planting? One of these plants is a C4 plant. It alternates its pathway to eliminate photorespiration. Some of these plants are corn, sugarcane, and sorghum. They are common in hot, dry climates, which benefit the overall product of sugar by reducing these effects. To reduce the negative effects of the environment they live in, these plants perform photosynthesis by carrying it out during the daylight hours when there is sunlight and close their stomata at night to reduce water loss. This process is different from others because the light-dependent reactions are separated from the dark reactions spatially. The light reactions occur in the mesophyll cells, whereas the dark reactions occur in the bundle sheath cells. This process looks like this. CO2 is fixed in the mesophyll cells to, to form oxaloacetate by the enzyme PEP carboxylase. Oxaloacetate is converted to malate, then transported to the bundle sheath cells. Malate will then break down releasing CO2, increasing its concentration inside of the cell, disallowing photorespiration. CO2 is then fixed by rubisco and made into sugar via the Calvin cycle, causing it to perform photosynthesis as normal. Another type of plant similar to C4 plants is cam plants. These plants include pineapples, cacti, and agave. Cam plants have a process that is unique compared to other plants. Instead of separating light-dependent reactions and dark reactions in space, they are separated in time. The stomata opens during the night and takes in CO2 to store as organic acids in the vacuoles. During the day when sunlight is available, the CO2 is released and used in the Calvin cycle for photosynthesis. By storing CO2 in the form of malic acid at night and releasing it during the day, cam plants efficiently use water and can survive in environments with limited water availability. This is why cam plants thrive in very hot, dry areas like the desert. Well, hot dog. I can't believe it. This is what I've needed all along. Which would be better for the farmer? Cam plants are better for the farmer because they have adapted to excessively dry environments by modifying the way they photosynthesize and use water. By the pathway that cam plants perform photosynthesis, they use water and can survive in environments with limited or unpredictable water availability. Oh, I understand now. Cam plants like pineapples. Now time to start planting.